Follow along as we build a fitting tribute to the Land Rover Defender. This series is brought to you by LR Center Limited and Frost Auto Restorers. As well as the help of SIP Industrial Products. Introducing our latest Land Rover t-shirt design, an ultra high quality comfortable cotton Kerry Green t-shirt with a hand screen printed Airfix Land Rover sprue design. Check it out at shop.funrover.com. This is how the build looked at the end of the last episode and we've been busy working on our custom fabricated dashboard. I ain't shown you this yet, it's the dashboard we're fitting. We wanted something that really screamed series Land Rover and those body coloured dashboards that old Land Rovers had are just fantastic. And that's what I wanted in the Defender. Those are part of the bulkhead so you can't just go out and buy one. So what we've had to do is we got in touch with a, a fabricator, welder, engineer extraordinaire on Facebook, Barnaby Duncan. He produces laser cut and folded bumpers and all kinds of stuff. And we got in touch with him and just said, look, do you think you can do this? Gave him some measurements. We sort of worked out something that would look correct, but it's going to fit the Defender and crucially will fit major components like the steering column, which will need to come through here and also we're going to have a, a centre pod with all the dials and dash components there so it's going to look really basic, really simple and rugged but very old. When this Land Rover is done it will look older than it really is which is obviously what we're going for. So what I need to do now, it's been partially folded as you can see the sides have been folded up, it was originally just one sheet of steel we will fold up this top part to make the kind of handrail hold that the series dashboards have. Then I need to weld up along all the edges and I'll add a 15, 20 mil band around the outside and that should be more or less good to go. Later on we'll fabricate some sides to go on our centre console once we know what's happening with that. We're going to use a series 2 or 2A dash pod. We need to prepare the galvanised bulkhead for painting. This is similar to the steps we showed you when painting the chassis. We need to remove the galve spikes and spatter, clean off burnt seam sealer and other bits of trash, and wash the lot down with thinners to remove grease and oil. Once the thinners had evaporated we could brush on mordant tea wash. This converts the galvanised surface to one that will accept paint and primer more readily. When the tea wash has done its job, the galvanised metal turns matte black. We then rinse the remaining solution off to neutralise it and the bulkhead is then left for a few days to dry. We have our budget spray booth set up, it's a large PVC greenhouse from eBay with a radiator fan as an extractor and two oil filled DeLonghi heaters to increase the temperature and reduce the humidity. I've mounted the bulkhead on an industrial clothes rail which makes a perfect panel mount for painting and we'll hit the bulkhead with a white coat of etch primer just to be sure that our subsequent paint layers will adhere. This is a two pack etch primer mixed one to one primer to activate a thinner. You only need a light coat of etch primer. Next we'll seal the bulkhead seams. You've just joined me as I'm putting on the seam sealer for the bulkhead. The reason this is done is because we have quite a few panels that overlay other panels and there's enough of a gap there between the welds for water to run. And it does, as you all know, uh, you get foot wells full of water if it rains in a defender. So through capillary action the water runs through those gaps. We're going to stop that by using some brushable seam sealer. And this is overpaintable. It remains flexible, it's similar to what Land Rover and other manufacturers use, it's an OEM style finish. You can purchase seam sealer in a caulking gun tube, however I'm using two lengths of masking tape to create near perfect seams with brushable sealer. Then I'll just peel that off, leaving us with a very crisp edge and a nice neat sealed seam. Then we just need to let this dry before we can prime and paint the bulkhead. After sealing all seams, and Land Rover would only generally seam seal four crucial areas of the bulkhead, 
we can then apply our primer and paint, which we'll show you how to do in an upcoming episode. A few weeks back, we prepared the tub striker plate for replacement with the YRM repair sections. This was achieved by measuring the repair section, carefully cutting it out to shape with an aluminium cutting disc on the grinder, and then dressing up the edges. And for good measure, I'm applying Sikaflex adhesive between the two sections. If nothing else, it will help to hold the repair piece in position as it's riveted, creating an extra strong sandwich of materials and adding a lot of strength in this area. Those could then be secured with clamps and riveted into place. Before painting the tub, I'm removing some of the awkward brackets that we can't fully sand around and don't worry, we'll show you the painting process very soon, I do promise. We're skipping ahead now as we're about to fit the tub. I'm cleaning up the fuel lines and securing those as access is not particularly great when the tub's in place. And there are schematics available online and in the manual if you want to check which fuel line goes into which inlet. The fuel pump and holder has been replaced in a previous episode with an anodized aluminium upgrade. Then we need to secure the lines using these clips, you need to drill holes for those. I also plumbed in the rear braided flexi brake hose. With the help of my very patient wife, we can now lift the painted tub into place. For those asking, it's LRC005 light green or otherwise known as pastel green as well as HCD which is its original colour code. This is an original Land Rover colour, in fact all pre-production models were painted in this colour, pastel green. The tub isn't very heavy, but it is quite cumbersome to manoeuvre. That's loosely in place now, though it still needs to be fully aligned and bolted down. The bulkhead is painted too, and I'm rather pleased with the end result, it looks great. When you're rebuilding a car on a long project like this, there's little jobs that keep you going that you're really looking forward to. One of them was painting the Land Rover. If you've ever rebuilt Land Rover, I'm sure you'll agree with me. That is just a fantastic feeling, but also beginning to start rebuilding things. So putting the galvanized cappings on, that's something I've been looking forward to for so long. You wouldn't believe. The way I'm doing that is I'm just putting on this foam tape I bought off eBay, nice and cheap just applying the tape on top of the tub. The reason I'm doing that is to try and isolate the, the galve and the uh, aluminium, but I have painted the top of them, which Land Rover wouldn't normally do. So that's fairly simple to do. Then I can go ahead and pop the cappings on. I'm awaiting delivery of some stainless 3 inch or 4.8 millimeter rivets to finish off installing the cappings all around. Time to lift the painted bulkhead into place. Again, this is much easier with two pairs of hands. It's a case of lifting the bulkhead into place, sliding the bolts through the outrigger into the bulkhead, though we did have to spend a little bit of time fettling to get those to align at both sides. Having the bulkhead in place feels like a huge achievement. It's taken a lot of work to get to this point, but it's so rewarding and it means we can crack on with the other jobs that require the bulkhead in place to complete. Now that the bulkhead is in place, I can fit the heavy duty rock sliders. These are from Paddock Spares and they are really, really good quality. I bought some before off eBay. They were kind of like cottage industry type rock sliders. They didn't fit and it was really frustrating. I had to modify the bodywork if I wanted it to fit and I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to modify my vehicle. So the difference with the Paddock ones is, well, firstly, they're galvanized. So there's a lot of corrosion resistance there straight from them. It's been dressed up, which is nice. Sometimes galvanized products aren't. Nice little end caps that finish off the rock sliders and just little stuff like that make it that bit more polished as a product. Nice jacking holes there. So once these are fitted, we'll be able to use them to jack up the Land Rover either side with a, a farm jack. But the crucial bit that really, really impressed me 
is because Paddock have designed this to allow for tolerances in the Land Rover build. The chassis itself has quite a bit of backward and forward uh, differences from each vehicle to vehicle. And so the way Paddocks have designed their rock sliders is this part here that goes into the outrigger on the chassis, well, it's actually adjustable. So you've got about an inch of movement there that allows you to uh, account for the tolerances or the lack of tolerances in the Land Rover chassis. Really smart product, these, and they're really good value as well. They're, they're actually some of the more budget orientated rock sliders and jackable sills you can get. So I've been very, very impressed with those. Highly recommend them, absolutely spot on. The provided instructions are straightforward to follow. Obviously, our build is partway finished, so you'll need to remove your standard body sills and undo the bulkhead outrigger nut. Then I'm sliding these adapters into the chassis. These fit with no effort needed at all. We need to install the bolt and the washer through the inside of the chassis rail on both sides into the back of the adapter. And this flange here locates them. Then I'm offering up the sill to the landy, first onto the front outrigger bolt and then loosely on the rear. I'm just going to hand tighten those rear bolts through the adapter, get them in, and then it's a case of snugging down all of the fixings on the jackable sill. They look great, and for the money, you can't go wrong. These sills are available in powder coat black finish, with or without steps as well. Just a quick test, and you'll see that they are very strong, and they do not budge. Thanks for watching. You can see our last episode here, and also check us out on funrover.com. We are at funrover on Twitter and Instagram, and we're also on Facebook.